uh, a very good afternoon to all today in this video we'll be discussing about the intra oral radiographic techniques now all these techniques i'll be dividing these techniques into three basic parts one is about the x ray machine second part is your radiographic films and the holders and third part i'll be explaining you all the radiographic techniques now if you focus about the films which are used in uh, the intraoral radiographic techniques there are these two films what you will be using now this is a iopa film you will be using this film for intraoral periopical uh, radiography and this is a size 2 film you should keep in mind that there are four sizes available in uh, intraoral radiographic films 0 1 2 and 3 so this is the size 2 film which most commonly you will be using and the dimensions of this film are 41 into 31 mm or some book states that it is 30.5 into 40.5 now you will be using this film for your iopa as well as bite wing radiography now if we open this film this is a new film i'll be opening it to demonstrate this is the outer cover the function of this outer cover is to prevent the film from moisture and up to an extent to light as well whenever you open this film you will find that there are three more parts inside this film this is the black paper now if you see that this black paper is on both the sides of the film this is your film and this is the black paper this black paper is on both the sides now the use of this black paper is to prevent the film from the light and if you notice here this is a lead foil and this lead foil is placed only on one side that is on the non exposure side this side of the film is the exposure side so this side should be towards the x ray exposure the other way to determine this is that there is a dot here this dot is called as embossed dot <coughs> sorry so the convexity or the elevation of this dot should always be towards the x ray source and this is the non exposure side so the lead foil is always placed on the non exposure side the function of the, there are so many functions of this lead foil the basic function is it prevents patient exposure suppose this is a tooth and these are the structures which are posterior to the film like the tongue is there palate is there so whenever a exposure is made the x, the x ray uh, rays will first hit the tooth then it, it, it uh, the x ray film uh, the x rays will hit the film and after hitting this film the x rays will not go beyond the lead foil that is a basic function so the structures which are posterior to the film will not get exposed second function is even in case the x rays exit the film or the lead foil and hit the posterior structures for example the tongue so there will be back scattered radiation the radiation will again travel towards the film so second function is the lead foil absorbs the back scattered radiation so incre it increases the contrast of the film and third uh, reason is if by chance the film is exposed from the reverse side suppose this is the exposure side and the ex uh, film is exposed from the reverse side so you will get a tire track appearance over the x ray film so you will come to know that this exposure is not from the actual side but this exposure is from the reverse side so these are the three basic functions of lead foil now this is a occlusal film today i'll be demonstrating you three techniques one is intraoral periopical technique second is bite wing technique and third is occlusal technique in intraoral periopical technique we will be discussing uh, two different uh, radiographic techniques one is bisecting angle technique another is parallel link cone technique so and i have already told you that this will be will be used for intraoral periopical technique and bite wing radiography whereas this film be film will be used for occlusal radiography now this is a size 3 film and the dimensions are 57 into 76 mm so you have to remember the uh, dimensions of all the films so this film is a size 3 film and the dimensions are 57 into 76 mm now i have already told you everything regarding the films now i'll be focusing on the 
holders what we will be using. This is a snap array holder. Now I am talking about interval periapical radiography. This is snap array holder. This is used for bisecting angle technique. So there are few parts of this thing, but I have already told you that this side towards the should be towards the X-ray source, and you have to clip it like this, and then we'll be placing it inside the patient mouth. Now you should always take care that the patient should always bite here. Patient should not bite here. So this patient should always bite on the broader area. So this is how you will place inside the patient mouth, and this is how the patient will bite. Now this positioning of the film and the holder will change according to the quadrant. This and this occlusal dot or embossed dot should always be to on the occlusal aspect. Suppose you are taking for maxillary mandibular, it should come like this, and if you are taking for maxillary, this dot should be downward. So accordingly, for each the quadrant, your positioning of the snap array holder and your film will differ. So this snap array holder will be used for bisecting angle technique to take a intraoral periapical radiograph. This is a second holder, what also you will be using, and this is called as XCP holder. This XCP holder stands for extended cone projection. Basically, the basic angle technique is called as short cone technique, whereas the paralleling cone technique is called as long cone technique, because this distance is increased in paralleling cone technique. So this is called as XCP holder, extended cone projection, and this holder we are using for paralleling cone technique. Now it is already over. We are not using any holders for occlusal film. So I have already told you that we are using holder. This holder is snap array holder is used for. Bisecting angle technique. This XCP holder is used for paralleling cone technique. We are not using any holder for occlusal because the patient is biting over here. And third is bite wing technique. Bite wing technique is indicated to take uh, the crown portion of both the maxillary as well as mandibular teeth. So there are dedicated holders available for this uh, bite wing technique. But if we do not have any holders, we can use this tape as well. So what we can do is, you use a tape like this, then you keep the film in between, and then you have to join this tape at the center. This you should take care that approximately this tape should join in the center, like this. Then you can tear it apart. So this is how you can use the tape to take a paralleling cone technique. Uh, sorry, the bite wing technique. Now what you will do? You will ask the patient to open the mouth, and the patient will bite here, and you will pull this tube towards yourself, and then you will expose it. So the crown portion of both the maxillary as well as mandibular teeth will cover on the film. So this is used for bite wing radiography. So this is everything about the films and the holders which are used in intraoral technique. Now I'll be telling you the uh, intraoral radiographic machine. I'll demonstrate you how it works and what are the functions and the technique.
Now this is the intraoral periapical machine what you will be using. Now first I will start with the parts of this machine. They are basically four parts. One this is the x-ray tube. This is called the heart of an x-ray machine because the x-ray tube lies in this chamber. This is your position indicating device. And if you open this position indicating device, you can also see the collimator. This is the collimator. Now there are six factors which controls x-ray beam and one of that factor is collimator. So again we were talking about the parts of x-ray machine, this is the x-ray tube. These three are the positioning arms, one, two, three. These three are the positioning arms and this is the control panel. Now this is how you can switch on the machine. Now there are so many buttons you can see here, but only one button will be basically working here that is the exposure time. You can increase and you can reduce the exposure time from this switch. Now basically for digital radiography we are using less exposure parameter that we are using 0.2 or 0.25 seconds but if we talk about manual radiography the film based radiography what we are using you have to slightly increase the exposure parameters to 0.638 approximately. So there are six factors which controls X-ray beam as I have already discussed. So to my name all this is exposure, exposure time, tube voltage, tube current, collimation, filtration and distance. So out of these three exposure parameters that is tube voltage, tube current and exposure time, we can only change the exposure time in this machine will not be changing tube voltage, will not be changing tube current. So this is basically there are three parts. One part is the exposure button which is always there outside the room. So I will show you the exposure button as well because the person who will be exposing it should always be outside this room. So the exposure switch is always outside the room and that switch is also called as dead man switch. Right? Now if you talk about this chamber particularly, we will be using vertical as well as horizontal angulation. Now these are vertical angulations, this is positive vertical angulation, this is negative vertical angulation, these are horizontal angulations. Now the vertical angulations you can see here, that this is positive vertical angulation, you can, change, you can see this is 30, 40, 50. And similarly, if you do it like this, it will again you can see minus 10, minus 20, minus 30. So for a particular quadrant, for a particular tooth, the angulation required is different. For example, if you are doing, uh, taking a radiograph for maxillary molar, the angulation should be plus 15. Whereas if you are taking for mandibular molar, the exposure type, the, this vertical angulation should be approximately minus 5. So this you can coordinate with this. If the angulations are there on both the sides, on the front side as well as on the back side. So this is everything about the vertical angulation and the horizontal angulation. Now this horizontal angulation should always be zero in cases of intraoral periapical. Why it should be zero and what is the meaning of zero? It means that the central x-ray beam should pass through the contact areas. Suppose these are two teeth. So the central x-ray beam should pass from here so that there is no superimposition of adjacent teeth. So you should always keep it in mind that the horizontal angulation should be zero or it should pass through the contact areas or it should be perpendicular to the film. That you need to take care. Now I will be telling you basically how to make a patient uh, positioning and how to take a radiograph. I will tell you all the four techniques, uh, two techniques under IOPA that is bisecting angle technique, second is balalicone technique, third is biting technique and fourth is occlusal radiograph. So I will demonstrate you with all the techniques.
So this is a demonstration patient. We will not be taking, we will not be exposing a patient because it is not ethical. So I will be just telling you the patient positioning and the uh, holder's positioning. And how will you angulate the tube head according to the patient and the technique. Now whenever you, you are taking, I uh, will start with bisecting angle technique. So whenever you are taking a radiograph of a patient, the patient positioning is very important. There are two planes in a patient that is mid sagittal plane, second is occlusal plane. So whenever you are positioning a patient in bisecting angle technique specifically, then the mid sagittal plane should be perpendicular and the occlusal plane should be parallel. Now this should be the patient positioning. Now you can see that the mid sagittal plane is exactly parallel, perpendicular sorry, and the occlusal plane is parallel. Now, I have already told you that we will be using this holder for bisecting and technique. This is a snap array holder and we will be using size 2 IOPFL. The dimensions are 31 into 41 millimeter. So, for this, for the maintenance of asepsis and sterilization, we are always using this sheet, cellophane sheet. Now, what you have to do is, I have already told you the film positioning. The dot which is there should always be towards the X-ray source and this occlusal dot should always be occlusal. Suppose if you are taking a maxillary radiograph, this dot should point downwards. Whereas if you are taking a mandibular radiograph, this point should project upward. For example, if you are taking a radiograph for this fourth quadrant, how will be the film placement? This will be the film placement. This planes towards the X-ray source and this dot should be occlusally. And I have told you earlier as well that the patient should bite here on the broader area. This is the broader area. So we will put inside the patient mouth and the patient will bite here. This positioning will change according to the quadrant. Suppose if you are taking for the third quadrant, this will be your holder and film positioning that the patient will bite here. If you are taking for anteriors, again you have to take care that the occlusal dot should be downward for maxillary, upward for mandibular. And for the anteriors, what you can do is you can place the film like this and you can ask the patient to hold the film. I will show you also. First, I will show you how to take a mandibular molar radiograph. This is this will be your film and the holder positioning placement. And you will put this holder inside the sheet. We will switch on the light. And you can nicely see this is how you will put it inside the patient's mouth. Mukulia. Now you will place the film like this. Fine? We are taking for molars. Cartilage is box. This will be your patient positioning. Now we will see again that the mid sagittal plane should be parallel, occlusal plane should be, uh, sorry, mid sagittal plane perpendicular, occlusal plane should be parallel. Now you have to take care that the vertical plane should be minus 5. We are giving minus 5 angulation for molars. This will be your patient position and the tube head position. Fine. So now what we will do? I have shown you the positioning for mandibular molar. We will throw this away and we will I will tell you how to make patient angulation for maxillary and tear. Again, you will place this film inside this packet. You will have to wrap the packet if the packet is large. This is how you can wrap it. And you will put the film inside the patient mouth. Now again the mid sagittal plane perpendicular, occlusal plane parallel. And we are giving plus 40 degree angulation for this. And the point of entry should be tip of the nose. So this should be your positioning for maxillary molar in intraoral periapical technique using bisecting angle technique. Fine.
Now, this is your bisecting angle technique is over. Now, what will I tell you? I will tell you how to take a radiograph form from XCP holder. And the technique in which we are using XCP holder is paralleling cone technique. Now, again, there are three parts. This is where the patient bite, this is the positioning arm, and this is the ring. Now, you always have to make sure that this ring, this area should always come in the center of this ring. If it is not in the center, suppose if you place like this, what will happen? It will not hit the fill. So, you have to take care that this ring should always come in the, this area should always come in the center. Now, suppose if you are taking again for mandibular molar you are taking, how will you do it? You will place the film like this, here, this. Now, you should always take care that this should always in the center. Now, what we will do? We will again take a sheet. We have to place this again in the sheet. Now, if we talk about paralleling cone technique, there is no patient positioning required. We do not want the mid sagittal plane perpendicular occlusal plane parallel. We will just place it here. Now, as you can see, we do not require mid sagittal plane. We will see nothing. The only thing we have to take care is of that we have to approximate our ring this PID against this ring. Now you can nicely see that these two rings are coordinating with each other. These are approximating each other. And then we expose the patient. As the central X-ray beam is exactly perpendicular to the film as well as the tooth, it is called as paralleling cone technique. This is the second technique what we use for IOP. Now this color coding is different for each area, this area yellow is used for posteriors, blue is used for anterior, so color coding is different as per the region. Now the third technique what we will be talking about is the bite wing technique. I have already told you that there are tablet tabs which are available for it, but if the tabs are not available, you can use this, tube, uh, this tape, this is a surgical tape. And now I have already told you the patient will bite here and he will pull it so that both the crowns of maxillary as well as mandibular teeth comes in a single fill. Now again we will take a sheet, this just for sterilization and asepsis. We will put it inside like this and what we will do is we will ask the patient to open the mouth, pull him, pull him. We will place it like this. We will take care that this is actually in the fine area. Dira dira ban ki jai. Ban ki jai dira dira ban ki jai. Rukhi rukhi rukhi. Up ki jai. And koli koli koli. Koli dira dira ban ki jai. Now. Now it is fine. Ban ka ki jai. And we will pull this. So that the film is not tilted. Now what you will do? You will again give up plus 10. In here, we should take care that the paralleling, uh, this uh, mid sagittal plane is perpendicular, occlusal plane is parallel, and we will give a plus 10 degree angulation for bite wing technique. Now, this is the patient positioning, the film positioning, as well as the PID positioning in bite wing technique. Now, the third technique, what we will be using is, we will be using Occlusal radiography. Now this occlusal radiography, I have already told you everything about this occlusal film. Now there are three uh, maxillary and three mandibular views. The three maxillary are ma maxillary cross-sectional, maxillary anterior and the maxillary lateral. Similarly in mandibular there are three maxillary mandibular anterior, mandibular cross-sectional and mandibular lateral. So I will show, show you how to take a maxillary cross-sectional radiograph. 
Again in this as well, the dot should be towards the X-ray source. So, it should be superiorly placed when we are taking maxillary and it should project downward when you are using a mandibular, taking a mandibular occlusion. Now this is you will place it and this is how you will place it inside the patient's mouth. This will be the full positioning in case of maxillary occlusal cross-section. Now we will again make sure that the mid sagittal plane is perpendicular, occlusal plane is parallel and we use this. Like this you will place the PID so that the central x-ray beam is through the tip of the nose in anterior occlusal and bridge of the nose in occlusal cross-sectional. This will be the patient positioning, film positioning and the PID positioning in case of occlusal beta. Now this film placement will change. If you are taking a mandibular radiograph, the film positioning should come like this. And the PID positioning should come like this. For anterior view. So this is your film placement, patient positioning and PID positioning for mandibular occlusal radiograph. The topic for today's demonstration is extraoral radiography. So first we will discuss about OPG or panoramic radiography. So in the video, this is the cassette which you are seeing with the intensifying screens. It is a light tight cassette which is used to hold the X-ray film or image receptor in tight contact with the intensifying screens. This type of cassette screen combination is used in conventional OPG machines. So here in the video you are seeing that you have the panel this is you set the pan word here you set the kvp milliampers and this is the cassette holder so here you load the film inside a dark room and finally this cassette film combination is loaded inside the conventional opg so most of the days now we are shifting towards digital opg this is the digital opg machine which is showing the opg part and it has an extension with ceph also so there is first step I have already told you that you have to load the cassette in the conventional but in digital you do not require any loading you have digital sensors here so the patient came to you you are you know supposed to tell the patient to wear lead apron even the operator should be wearing the lead apron now the most important part in the OPG is patient positioning so you have to instruct the patient not to move during the movement of the machine so first we have to cover this white block with a cellophane sheet so that it is sterilized then you have to ask the patient to bite on the notch on the bite block so the maxillary and mandibular teeth they are placed in the notch then you have to adjust the headrest so you can see the headrests are adjusted now next step is you have to orient the planes so you have a vertical plane and a horizontal plane the mid sagittal plane has to be perpendicular to the floor the frankfurt horizontal plane has to be parallel to the floor so the patient is again instructed hmm. he has to stand straight back should not be stooping so you expose the patient now you can see that your digital sensor that is receptor and your x-ray tube is rotating around the patient so during the when the rotation is complete finally you get the image right so this is the conventional imaging conventional imaging OPG machine you have a cassette holder here but in digital machine there are already sensors you do not require any cassette holding thing so this is used with the intensifying screens So after the image has been taken, it is analyzed by the computer analysis and you get a OPG image. You can also adjust the contrast and sharpness and resolution. That is the advantage of digital panoramic. So now we come to some details about panoramic radiography. It is an extraoral imaging technique where the image receptor is placed outside the mouth and also the x-rays they are directed from 
outside so it produces a single image of the facial structures including maxilla and mandibular arches and their supporting structures so there is a rotational tomography or pantomography which is the other name for opg then it was first discovered by numata of japan in 1933 and petiro of finland the main indications of opg are when you are not able to take intraoral techniques due to trismus or gagging when the lesion is large enough that you require larger anatomical areas to be covered whenever you have to study growth and development in cases of trauma fractures impactions so now next is we come to the principle of opg the principle is based upon rotational slit tomography so here you have a rotational movement of your x-ray tube and image receptor the slit collimator is used that is why we use the slit word here in intraoral collimation we use rectangular or circular collimators but in panoramic we use slit collimator tomography because the image is taken in the layers so the opg uses sliding rotation centers so it has one anterior and two posterior centers of rotation so what is center of rotation the axis around which your receptor and tube head rotate is termed as center of rotation so you have one anterior and two posterior center of rotation depending upon the opg machine different opg machines could have different number of sliding rotation centers so the source of radiation that is your x ray tube and image receptor they are rotating around the patients at the same speed around a center of rotation so you can see that a fan shaped beam is directed towards the jaw and using a slit collimator so the collimator which is used in panoramic radiography is a slit collimator so the image receptor that passes in front of a slit collimator recording successive areas of the structures exposed now because at one time one area is exposed and recorded so successive areas are definitely recorded so that is why it is termed as tomography so the structures which are closer to the tube head they get magnified and appear blurred the structures which are closer to the image receptor they cast very sharp shadows now as the tube head rotates the cassette holder also rotates so there are lined up with the x ray beam so the next important part in the opg is focal trough which is also known as image layer it is a three dimensional curved zone in which the structures lined within the focal trough they are well defined on a final image so it's it is a zone which corresponds to the shape of upper and lower jaws now shape and width of focal trough is determined by the path of sliding rotation center right so the sharpest is the area which is in the focal trough so the structures falling inside the focal trough cast sharpest shadows structures which are outside the focal trough they are minimally visible or they appear to be blurred so focal trough is very significant you have to place the patient in such a position that your focal trough the areas to be imaged they are centered in the focal trough so here you can see the opg machine with a self attachment which we can see so you have to you know adjust the parameters for the self or for the panoramic whenever you are shooting so the most important aspect while shooting a radiograph panoramic radiograph is patient positioning if your positioning is proper then only you'll be able to get a proper image so this i have already explained to you so you can see that there is intensifying screen this is the conventional opg where we use the cassette holder with intensifying screens you can see the image here so it is loaded this image receptor it is loaded inside the dark room and it is tightly fitted inside the cassette holder 
this cassette holder is inserted inside the machine here you can clearly see two lines the horizontal and vertical lines these are frankfurt and mid sagittal plane so next we come to the landmarks so there are few landmarks which are very important so a is showing you the cervical vertebra b is showing you the external oblique ridge c is the zygomatic process which you see in maxillary posterior region in an iopa also u shaped radio opacity then d is your maxillary sinus e is zygomatico temporal suture f is your lingula of the canal mandibular canal and then you have cervical vertebras so there are certain details which you can get on opg that is advantageous but there are few limitations such as it has less sharpness and resolution as compared to your iops definitely the cost of cost of the equipment is comparatively higher than your intraoral machines you get inherent magnification in the opgs and there is blurring in the anterior region so the other important landmarks which you can see are ear lobes that is a then you have b that is your external auditory meatus c is your submandibular gland fossa which is the mandibular posterior molar region submandibular gland lies there there you see a rarefied area which is called as submandibular gland fossa then d is a radio opacity which is your nasal septum e represents the hard palate f is the mental foramen g is the hyoid bone then you have the mandibular canal that is h then is pterygoid plates which is seen behind the third molars you can see in the maxillary uh, posterior region then you have articular eminence all of you know what is articular eminence and finally k represents your pterygo maxillary fissure so these are few landmarks in the opg so the details about the opg have already been covered in the lecture this is so now after discussion about the panoramic radiograph now we shift to a brief about few other extra oral radiographic techniques so i have already showed you that opg machine has an extension for cef and other extra oral views so now in the video you can see the positioning of the patient while taking a lateral cef it is a projection of sagittal plane so image receptor is placed parallel to the mid sagittal plane as you can see that the left side of the patient is towards the image receptor now you will be adjusting your forehead rest and ear rest patient is asked to stand, stand straight central x ray is directed perpendicular to image receptor centered over the external auditory meatus the patient is asked to occlude the teeth so the main indication is in the orthodontic treatment planning now you have to adjust the machine settings for cef the sensor is pushed upwards so that your x rays can reach the image receptor properly you can shoot it now next view we have to adjust the machine according to the another view we are showing you the view which is the reverse towns view so here the patient is positioning with the forehead touching the image receptor as you can see the image receptor is in the front of the patient perpendicular to the mid sagittal plane the head is tilted downwards such that the cantometer line forms an angle of 25 to 30 degrees with the image receptor you can see the patient is asked to open the mouth so open the mouth to visualize the condyles properly so central x ray is directed perpendicular to image receptor centered at the level of condyles so it is seen for fractures of condylar neck so next positioning is for waters view also called as pns view as you can see image receptor is in the front of the patient head is tilted upwards cantometer line form an angle of 37 degree with the image receptor the chin is touching the image receptor central ray perpendicular to image receptor centered in the area of maxillary sinuses main indication whenever you have to study leaf foot 1 2 3 fractures and paranasal sinuses so the fourth view is base of skull projection or submento vertex projection so neck is extended backwards as far as possible so that your cantometer line form a 10 degree angle with the image receptor central ray is perpendicular to the image receptor it is directed from below the mandible towards the vertex of the skull it is not done in the patients who have a cervical problem the central x ray is directed centered about 2 cm anterior to the line connecting left and right condyles 
the main indications for submento vertex are pallid pterygoids base of the skull and sphenoid sinuses so these are four most important extraoral views whose mm -hmm. indications all of you must know so now after the positioning we will be showing you some radiographs to identify so till now we discussed about the patient positioning in various extraoral views now we will see how these images appear and also we will discuss some important indications of these extraoral projections so before going to the extraoral projections we will discuss the landmarks used in patient positioning so the most important landmark which is used is msp that is mid sagittal plane it is a vertical line coinciding with the sagittal suture and it divides the head into two halves then you have the second landmark in the central figure you can see a canthometer line it is a imaginary line joining the central part of external auditory canal to outer canthus of the eye and it is also called as radiographic baseline the third important landmark is your frankfurt plane it is a line connecting superior border of external auditory canal with the infraorbital rim so your canthometer line forms a 10 degree angle with the frankfurt plane so the first projection which we are discussing is the lateral self projection here you can see the image receptor is parallel to the mid sagittal plane and it is on the left side of the patient central x ray is perpendicular to the mid sagittal plane it is centered over external auditory meatus so this is the illustration which is depicting the self position of the patient there is also wedge filter which is present on the anterior aspect of the beam to absorb some radiation so that in the resultant image where which you can see here there is soft tissue also which can be visualized so this is the resultant image of lateral self we'll try to superimpose the left and right side most important indication is dental soft tissue landmarks skeletal identification and in orthodontic treatment planning for measurements to determine craniofacial morphological features so this is about lateral self now we will shift to the another projection which is reverse towns it is a open mouth projection again your image receptor is placed in front of the patient with mid sagittal plane perpendicular to the receptor now here you can see the head is tilted downwards so that your forehead touches the image receptor right so in the open mouth position what is happening is that you can visualize the condyles in a proper manner so condylar heads they are located inferior to the articular eminence to improve the visualization now here you can see that the head is tilted downwards so that your canthometer line forms 25 degrees to 30 degrees angle with the image receptor the first figure is showing you that angle so the second figure is the illustration again so forehead is touching the image receptor central x ray is perpendicular to the image receptor and it is centered at the level of condyles so you get a resultant image which is elongated pa or a reverse towns view so next is how does this image appear so you can recognize in the second finger that you can see this is a elongated pa kind of a image and you can visualize the condyles properly here right so it, the most important indications for this view is whenever you have to visualize the fracture of neck of the condyle and also when you want to see neck and head of the condyle in antero posterior direction so the next image which we'll be going to discuss is water's view so again image receptor you can see it is in the front of the patient perpendicular to the mid sagittal plane now here the head is tilted upwards so that your chin touches the image receptor so in the second figure you can see that the tip of the nose is almost 1 inches away from the film so you have to tilt the head upwards so if you open the mouth in this position what happens sphenoidal sinuses can be seen so x ray is directed perpendicular 
and it is centered over the area of maxillary sinus. So, X-rays enter from the vertex, exit from the acantheon and you can see the resultant image of water's view. It is indicated for air sinuses or whenever you have to see especially maxillary sinuses. Also, when you have to see the fractures of maxillofacial region, leafoot 1, 2, 3 or zygomatic orbital and also you can visualize nasoethmoidal complex in the water's view. So, this is how the image appears. So, the next view is your submanto vertex view. It is also called as base of the skull projection. So, here again your image receptor is perpendicular to your mid plane. Neck of the patient is extended backwards so that your x-rays they are perpendicular to the image receptor which are directed from below the mandible from the vertex of the skull. So, it is centered 2 cm anterior to the line connecting your right and left condyles. So, you can see the central x-ray is directed 2 cm anterior to the line connecting right and left condyles. So, here are the resultant images which you get. The first image is your proper submento vertex. The most important indication is palate whenever you have to visualize pterygoid region. Whenever you have to see the base of the skull, you have to visualize the sphenoidal sinuses. So, you go for SMV. So, the next is the jug handle view. You can see here underexposed view. It is required for evaluation of your zygomatic arches. So, how much exposure is reduced? One third of the exposure to SMV results in a jug handle view. So, you can see the important landmarks of the submento vertex projection here. You can see frontal sinuses, zygomatic arches, phenodal sinuses. You can see foramen magnum, right? You can also see shadow of the cervical spine. So, that's why it is called as base of skull projection. So, you can see palate, pterygoid region. So, these are the important landmarks or important indications for submento vertex. Now, we will recognize some radiographs which we have already discussed. So, all of you can recognize by now that this is a extra oral view which is lateral CIF. So, this is the second view. So, just seeing it, we can say that this is submento vertex projection. You can see the palate, you can see magnum, foramen magnum, you can see sphenoidal sinuses. So, this is a SMV, submento vertex projection, reduced exposure, jug handle. So, this is the next projection. This is a normal PA view. So, you can see this is PA skull. Here, this is a no normal in which there is no tilting of the head the image receptor is just placed in front of the patient. So, this is jug handle view. So, this is the modified submento vertex. One third exposure of submento vertex, you can see zygomatic arches. So, this image is of elongated PA or reverse towns. You can see the open mouth. It is most commonly indicated for condylar neck fractures. So, this is the last image which is showing you the paranasal sinus view or a waters view. You can see frontal sinuses maxillary sinuses and sphenoidal sinuses.